Welcome back, everybody, to the continuation of our Let's Play of Space Exploration and Cross Story 2. So, as promised, the nuclear power plant is mostly in. Uh, we are still missing a couple of turbines over here. They are currently being made as we are speaking. Uh, but for us to start up this power plant over here, we've got everything we need in place. Now, of course, we want to make this a sleepy power plant, which means this power plant will only be fed fuel if it is required to. And we've done this a couple of times in the past. Um, we had a specific design for this in our previous playthrough, but it had one small flaw. Uh, it relied on a memory cell over here. This over here is a memory cell. This over here can hold any kind of state. Uh, let me just show you real quick. If we just do something like this and this, and then we just wire it up. There we go. And tell you to read your hand contents. And we put in, for example, a train station over there. Whoop. Then we will see that the train station signal over here will be in there pretty much forever. Well, not completely forever, but it can work with everything we have over here, like... Uh, wires, and maybe some green wires, stuff like that, and stuff like that. Sure, sure, sure. So this thing over here will store and hold a signal for you, but it will only do that for as long as this thing is powered. The moment this thing loses power, all this information in there is gone. <laughs> now, um, I know me, I know how you play Factorio pretty well, and I'm as prepared as I'm always for be prepared for like power failure but power failure will come it will always come it will always be something stupid that you don't really um think about and at some point in time your base will go into a blackout or a brownout or both uh, so i was kind of thinking how could we make this in better and i kind of had an epiphany once i had like this little thing over here i think we can make a mechanical memory storage a mechanical memory storage will be better uh, as this over here will then not rely on a power reliant memory cell and how does a mechanical memory storage look like well pretty pretty simple actually if you think about it so let's make it over here uh, it is pretty much the same thing let's maybe use only this thing over here it's pretty much the same thing as we have over here with the one difference that let's have a look yeah we are going to need something like this <laughs> This has two distinct net states. It looks a bit like a Petri net, if you think about it. Have you ever seen a Petri net? Uh, this could be something like that. And we will have a clear transition to when we will put over a specific item. This item will probably be something stupid like maybe a module or a, no, a lamp. It will be a lamp. It will definitely be a lamp. Uh, this thing over here will always read the belt. This thing over there will always read the belt. Uh, hold that. Hold that. So with this, we always know what we have over here problem is of course it's always the same signal but oh it's always the same signal that's not good can we no we can't really Ooh. <laughs> would be amazing if we could convert the lamp into something different but hmm. maybe this does not work as much as expected or maybe it does and i'm just being stupid um and yeah i'm just being stupid i think uh, let's keep these for now, just in case. But we should have different wires for different states. There we go. Uh, this over here is still not perfect. We're going to be tweaking with this soon. But first and foremost, most importantly, how are we going to make sure that we only put in power over here when we need to? And the first question, of course, is when do we need to put in power? Now, if we have a look at our power plant over here, we do have this big-ass steam buffer. I've already done the liberty of wiring up these tanks over here. And the tanks over here at the bottom with the green wire. So the green wire over here tells us exactly how much steam we have at any given time. Now, let's just imagine the following thing. Uh, our reactor is at maximum demand. Like, it will run full power non-stop, yada, 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 yada. That means uh, we can easily calculate our maximum output or throughput through all of these turbines. And we know that because it is pretty much identical to the amount of water pumps we have. We got 16 water pumps over here. 16 water pumps pumping at 1,250 uh, 1, units um, of liquid per second means every second we are going to use 20,000 steam if this power plant runs at maximum demand. The nuclear power plants over here, they will take a bit of time to re-warm up. They will not completely cool down. It's not like they will go down to like 15 degrees Celsius. They will go down to 415 
just under the minimum that is required to fire up these boilers. Which means that once we start up these reactors over here again, these reactors over here will more or less start making uh, the required heat immediately. The only thing we have to do is we have to wait for this heat to reach all of these boilers so that all of this over here is working again as expected. Now, there's not really a great science behind this. I could maybe look up how long it takes for these reactors to generate that heat and stuff like that. Uh, technically, we could probably calculate it. There is a calculation. I, I think I see it in my mind, but I don't really want to do that right now. We're just going to do the thing an engineer does when he's really, really lazy. We're going to estimate. <laughs> We're just going to estimate. Let's just assume it will take about half a minute for this reactor to become fully operational again. That would mean that we would have to push through 20,000 units of steam for half a minute. So if we multiply that by 30, we will be at 600,000 units of steam. And that is this amount. Um, now, we got the same amount of storage on the other side of the power plant. So I'm going to estimate again. I'm just going to say the number. If we are below 1.2 million units of steam, that's going to be the point in time where we will want to fill up the reactors over here. That is just going to be my, my, my biased opinion on when we want to do that. It will probably be the case that we will have to tweak that number. But I think, just assuming that we will need half a minute for this thing over here to become operational again, I think that's a fine number. I don't think that's fine. So we could, of course, do the other thing. We could run an experiment to check when we need to do this. But to be perfectly honest, I don't really want to waste time on that. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> so, um, let's go over here with this one. This one is going to be fairly easy. We are measuring steam either way. Steam. And if this is going below, then 1.2 million. Then this will be our green take. This will be one of the criteria for us to open up. Um, well, to put in one of these. Also, we should probably override the stacks over here. Put it to one. There we go. Because we definitely only want to put in one. We could have probably used just a simple blue inserter. I know, I know. But at some point in time, if you play like Victoria for a while, you don't really start to care much about inserters anymore. Good, 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 good. So that will be number one. Number two would be, and this is where we could use this system over here. Um, of course, if we have already put in a piece of fuel, we probably do not want to put in any more fuel. Now, here comes then the question. How could we... Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we could... Yeah, I know exactly how we could do this. Uh, let's make this a little bit better. <laughs> it's going to be a bit stupider. But trust me, it's going to be more fun this way. Hmm. Oh, how do we do this? Yeah, this will be fine. This will be fine. Uh, yeah, we're going to do it exactly like this. Uh, I'm just going to use red wire for this one real quick. So you have an air and you have an air. Um, will this work? Hmm. Yeah, this could work. I'm, I'm kind of thinking about putting down, say, like... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight lamps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lamps. This will be our counter for... It's more than that. It's 12. Shit. <laughs> it's more than that. But this could be our counter for when we want to push things over. But... Mm, no. Technically, all of these will be running at the same clock. The inserters will all be running at the same time. Oh, but well, that's getting tricky. What if one of them is not running? What, what if they, uh, they they should never be... <laughs> never assume that things don't get desynchronized. That, that is a very bad thing to do. Things will get desynchronized. Um, tell you what. I'm still thinking about this in my mind. But maybe for now, and just for now, we go with the memory cell. So how do you make a memory cell? Well, we'll need a condition. R is equal to zero. And we're going to output the contents over here. And very important, we have to loop it on yourself. There we go. I definitely know that this will work. 
it's not the best solution, I know, but I still I need to think about a better solution. The mechanical storage over here could be a good solution, but let's go with this one. Good, so that is our memory cell. Let me just check over here if it is actually the memory cell. Yeah, it's actually memory cell. Good, 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 good. So what do we do then? Um, very simple. We are going to wire up stuff again. We have to wire up these. There we go. And we will have to wire up these. Here we go. Can we get all the way over there? No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, I guess we can. I don't really want to. No, 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 no. We don't really want to connect this up to the big steam thingamajig. Uh, we could just place some constant combinators over here. These constant combinators over here don't really do anything. They are just there. So that we can route our signal around. I could use a power pole for that as well, but yeah, that's fine as well. Good. It goes around over there. They're all connected now. Very important. We want to read the hand contents and we want to set and enable them. So whenever we read the hands, uh, we were going to be pulsing that. And they're going to be enabled if the green signal is larger than zero. That is going to be our enablement signal. Also, the hand size will be on one. The hand size is on one. Good. And is that actually a green signal? That is the green signal. Yes. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it should be fine. It should be fine. So, we got the memory cell over here. Then, uh, we also want to know... Whenever these over here take something out of the reactor. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, yeah, we need to use the other color for this one. Or we need to use other... Uh, what's it called again? Here we go. Yeah, let's use the red wire for this one. Red wire will be fine. Yeah, if we use the green wire for this, uh, the signal will be mixed the moment we connect up with the constant combinators. Good. These over here... Always enabled. We only want to read the hand size. That's the only thing we want. Stack size over here. It doesn't really matter. There's only going to be one fuel cell in there. Either way. Good. Here we go. Here we go. And actually, we need an arithmetic combinator. Not one of these. So. These over here will tell us whenever they plop out a fuel cell. So over here, we can just go. Fuel cell. Where is it? Empty fuel cell. Multiply that by... Minus one and output it as the fuel cell signal. So this is going to counteract the inserters over here. These inserters over here, they will be counting up. These inserters over here, they'll be counting down. So whenever we take out a fuel cell over here, we count down. Uh, which means if we start this off with one fuel cell over here in every reactor, the initial countdown will be going down, which means we do need to then... Let's have a look. Let's take the green wire. You go into the memory cell and you go into the memory cell as well. This over here will then give us the combined information. Oof, wait a minute. That's, that's a terrible idea. Use the red wire for this one. There we go. Yeah, that will be fine. So this over here will then keep in balance or keep in balance the, the fuel cells to go in and out. And this over here will tell us how many fuel cells we have left. Is this going to be correct like this? Um, I think it will work like this. I could be very, very wrong about this. But you know what? There's only one way to try this out. Uh, and that is to actually try it out. We should start ordering up some fuel cells over here. Um, order up. I guess 50, but for now, order up 20. We, I don't think we have that many fuel cells produced yet, but start ordering them up. There we go. There we go. And get them over here, please. Good, 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 good. And then we can check it out over here for ourselves. In the meantime, uh, this over here will tell us um, a signal. Then this thing over here will tell us a signal. And that will be the one that will tell us when we push out. What we need to push out. Good. Okay, fuel cells are coming in. Uh, we can then combine this up with you. And over here, we just go. If the fuel cell signal is less than one, uh, less than zero, then we're going to check out a green check mark. And then we are just going to combine 
both of these up. If green check mark is larger than one, so if both conditions are met, we are going to put out the green signal. And the green signal then is going to be the one that goes back at these and tells them to put some stuff in the air. Now, last time I did this, <laughs> things kind of got a bit weird. Um, also, let's do it like this. And if you start debugging signals, it's going to be absolutely horrendous. But this could work. So you have an air. You are already outputting the green checkmark because steam is lower than a certain level. That is fine. Uh, we are just going to start to fire up all of these reactors. Let's just make sure that there's only one fuel in all of these. Yep, perfect. Good. Currently, the memory cell holds no signal. Uh, and that is good. This is definitely a bit chaotic. Uh, I'm sorry about the wires. <laughs> Probably would have been better if we built this like the other way around. But so be it. Um, it will take about 200 seconds for this reactor to run. But you can only see that the reactor over here is heating up. And the heat over here will start to propagate through the pipes. And it does that quite fast, actually. I think that half a minute is a good number. The wider you make your heat pipe, the faster or the better it traverses through. If you make a single lane heat pipe like some builds have, it could just be that all the heat gets eaten up by the first couple of boilers over here, and then it will take quite a long time for this to propagate. The wider you make the heat pipe over here, the more heat can flow through it, um, the faster it will get to these machines. Um, yes, just about that. <laughs> Good. Come on, Mr. Reactor over here. We are at 160. And it's still going to take quite a bit of time. Now, technically, yeah, the moment we eject fuel should be the moment that this thing over here should decide that fuel should go back. Because currently, only if the fuel signal over here is negative, and that will only happen if all of these eject. Only then we inject. So, we will have to wait a bit. Um, okay, we're halfway there. Good, 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 good. How is heat? Heat is fine. Heat is very, very fine. How is the rest of the build? Oh, lovely. Perfect timing. The rest of the build has all of its turbines. So, we are actually standing in front of a fully functional nuclear reactor now. Good. Now, keep in mind, this over here makes 5 gigawatts of energy, and this over here only consumes 4 uh, I did that so that this reactor over here can heat up a bit faster. Um, from our experiment over here, we can already see that one fuel cell makes this reactor heat up about... What is that? Are we going to need one more fuel cell? Wait a minute. <laughs> Dang, this thing is slow. Yeah, one fuel cell over here will probably be enough to heat this thing up to temperature, maybe. What is that? A quarter left? Yeah, maybe... It will be enough for this to, to heat it up to temperature. Uh, so be it. So be it. But then our assumption will also be fine that when we only put in a fuel on the bond, uh, that we will probably not overheat even if this over here is not fully consuming the fuel, which is great as well. So, it's probably not going to work right away. It's, it's probably absolutely not going to work right away. But I'm curious to see what will happen over here once we reach the point of fuel ejection. Come on, show me, show me. It it, it will probably just, just go like into like an open relay state and we'll start pushing in fuel non-stop. <laughs> I can already see that coming. Oh, well, it did a single swap. Okay, that worked, lovely. Uh, the memory cell over here is empty. Uh, and it's empty because, well, we did the full swap. We put as much out as we put in. Uh, the relay should still be open. Ah, there we go. Here's my steam. There's my power plant. So next time around, maybe, hopefully, this over this condition over here will, will catch us. And then the nuclear power plant over here should stop in its tracks. What the hell happened over here? <laughs> There's some pipes missing. There we go. Let's check the other side. Yeah, other side is the same issue. What the hell? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Let's have a look at the power graph. Oh, yes. 
Oh, that, that oil power plant over here can now go to sleep for a while. Ah, oh, five gigawatts of power. Lovely. And yeah, temperature over here is fine. And steam signal. Okay, how much steam do we have in here? And we can actually check over here. We've got, yeah, steam is going up. Perfect. Uh, let's maybe use this real quick and reconnect some of these builds. I've disconnected a couple of these builds. Mostly because, well, we had some power issues. So that's more or less the reason why I disconnected these. We can now safely reconnect these if I can find the appropriate power poles. There's one. Mm. And then you over there, you get this one. There we go. And of course, I also deactivated uh, this build over here. Actually, I did not? Question mark? Seems I did not disconnect this one. Perfect. <laughs> but I definitely disconnected you over here. Um, and I think I did this in the horrible way of just removing a power pole. God dang it. Uh, let me fly over there. Um, eh. But before we do that... How much steam do we have? 1.6 million. We should be just at the border. We are... You're still putting out the signal. Wait a minute. Oh, shit. We never hooked you up. Oop. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now he stopped. Um. And yeah, the reactor temperature is sitting at 500. Perfect. Still going up, but going up slowly. But that should be fine. And you over there, you're running fine as well. This one over there is pumping at full speed. All of these are running at full speed. Lovely. Love to see that. And steam over here will be full soon. So, yeah, let's wait for, for this swap over here. But after this swap, we should not add more fuel into it. So let's give it a bit of a wait. And then we can fix up more parts of the base. Come on. Come on. Do it. Do it. Here we go. Yep, and they all emptied themselves out. The reactor is now off. Excellent. And it will turn itself on again as soon as this over here reaches less than 1.6 million steam. Also over here in the memory cell, we've got a negative value of 12 nuclear fuel cells. This will trigger this condition. Absolutely perfect. This thing is working exactly as the mod. Shit, that's the first time. <laughs> Usually when I build these things out of the blue or out of the top of a memory, there's always something going wrong with it. Well, I guess this time we got lucky. And then like 10 episodes later, that whole thing explodes. <laughs> Good. But we now have nuclear power, which means our builds are going to be not really much better. They're, they're actually going to get way worse because we're now going to be um, spending a lot of power when we don't need to spend power. Uh, but everything is now connected up again. We The base is still a bit in an idle mode. I don't think I disconnected anything else. Mm, did I disconnect anything over here? Nah, this looks fine. All of this looks fine. So we got nuclear power. Good, 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 good. We also got... Oh, you know what we can check up on now? Let's check up on the plate machine over here. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure that there is still quite a bit over here going wrong. I think I only did a partial fix over here. Yeah, I only did a partial fix over here. Uh, that goes in, that goes in. That is already going in. Is it working? That thing is done. Okay, that thing is done. Uh, you go in, you go in, in. You're in already. In, 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 in. I'm not sure how this over here got so jumbled up. But, yeah, let's just fix it real quick. Here we go. Both of these are wrong. Down, up. Up, down. Down, up. Up, down. Down, up. Up, down. Good. And then up, down. Down, up. Up, down. Down, up. Up, down. Down, up. Wow, this one is completely broken. <laughs> Um, yeah, maybe maybe the bot placement did something stupid. I'm not quite sure. I missed this one. Um, there we go. There we go. 
Good, but we got the power for this whole thing. And I kind of want to see this thing in action. This over here is, I think, also the most power-hungry build we have at the moment. So it's a good test to see if our nuclear power plant over here is doing exactly what it needs to be doing. No, nope, this one was really correct. Uh, here we go. God dang it. Uh, and you over there. You over there. You are fine. You're completely jumbled. You're jumbled. <laughs> Don't tell anyone what happened over there. <laughs> Just rotate the whole machine around, shall we? Um, there we go. There we go. And there we go. What about over here? Did I not even do it over here? I remember that we did this a couple episodes back for almost all the machines. I guess either I got lazy or I forgot about the rest. I probably forgot about the rest. I'm pretty sure I forgot about the rest. There we go. There we go. Wait, this was correct. There we go. Well, at least now we will be sure that all of these over here are in the correct position and working as intended. There we go. <laughs> yeah, rotating the belt around also makes this thing orient itself in the correct orientation. Maybe it's just a bot placement thing. I just have to be more careful with this. Because having to go around to be all the time flipping inserters. Uh, uh, okay, this one's correct. And then, nope. I almost thought that these over here were all correct, but nope. We definitely fixed it for at least one row. <laughs> God dang it. Um, this one's fine. And then, fine, 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 fine. Yeah, I think we fixed it for this one and the one above it. So we only did two rows and then we kind of stopped it. Dang it. <laughs> Good. Um, damn. We got the same issue over here. There we go. Make it spin, please. Did I fix this correctly? Yeah, that seems good. That seems good. And now let's go to the top. Yeah, that seems fine. Okay, you start making uh, the molten stuff. Excellent. I do know that we have the same issue over here, by the way. Flip, flip, flip. There we go. And I think the rest is fine. I'm pretty sure the rest is fine. If not, we should see stuff back up uh, either way. Then again, uh, let's check. So that input port over there is fine. And that input port over there is fine. Okay, all the input ports are fine. So the big question now is how does this over here behave? Because we haven't even looked at this one yet. And we got like one minute to take a look at this. So let's make sure that this minute over here is good. All of these over here uh, are starting to eat stuff. Yeah, power is going up. That is great. Love to see that. Um, I'm a little bit curious to see that this build over here is not full. Oh, I see why. And same thing over here. It probably put some random stuff out on the other side. And because of that, it got stuck. There we go. There we go. Just make sure that this one over here is working. Just gonna just consume a little bit of the tip everywhere. There we go. And then yeah, put the rest in there. Put the rest in there. Good. Now we're getting our full belt. Excellent. Uh, it's still not really being consumed all the way, but I do see quite a bit of niobium plates. Not niobium plates. That's the wrong belt pack. <laughs> Homium plates. Homium plate going down the line. Perfect! So, that will be it for today. If you do like what you see, please do leave a like, a follow, a comment, a subscription. Every one of those actions does help me out in growing this YouTube channel into something bloody amazing. And without further ado, I wish you all an amazing evening. And until next time, see you around! Also, if I can subscribe, I kind of ran out of time for this episode. Please do click that button. It helps me grow. It helps every YouTuber you like grow. Good night!